we want to investigate how the velocity of a pendulum changes with its position and we want to validate some of the uh, uh, velocity relationships and acceleration relationships for a pendulum. Now calculus students will verify that if the position of a pendulum is given as a function of time by a cosine omega t then its velocity is going to be the derivative of this uh, just the limit of the delta x over the delta t, the distance divided by the time and we go through some calculus magic and we obtain negative omega a sine omega t. We'll see in a little while how we can obtain this uh, relationship without using calculus if we accept the reference circle model. But of course the reference circle model is a result of a calculus analysis also so we'd be kind of going in a circle. Nevertheless uh, non-calculus students can get a pretty good understanding from the reference circle model. Acceleration is a derivative of the velocity, which is a second derivative of the position, negative omega squared a cosine omega t. Again, calculus students uh, will understand this. Uh, others don't need to. You just have to know the result. For a pendulum, omega is the square root of g over l. So for the pendulum that we observed in class with a length of 1.5 meters, we obtained omega at about 2.6 radians per second. Okay, so that uh, our pendulum should obey this kind of a law or this kind of an equation. Uh, position ought to be given by this sort of an equation, velocity by this, and so forth. Now, if the velocity is negative omega a sine omega t as we claim, then what should be the maximum velocity? Well, omega and a are constant. The only thing that's changing is t here, but of course that changes omega t and that changes the value of the sine. So we ask ourselves, what's the range of values a sine could have? Well, we know that the sine function is between negative 1 and 1. If the sine is negative 1, then we get omega a here. And obviously, we can't get any bigger value because the sine can't go less than negative 1. So when sine omega t equals negative 1, the velocity is omega a, and the absolute value of the sine can't be bigger than 1, so this thing can't ever be bigger than omega a. For the system we observed, if we let a equal 30 centimeters with an omega of 2.6 radians per second, then what do we conclude about the maximum velocity? Well, we conclude that the maximum velocity will be omega here times a here comes out 78 centimeters per second. It turns out that it's not too difficult to test the plausibility of this idea. We simply allow our pendulum to swing back from a 30 centimeter displacement till it hits a barrier right here at its equilibrium position. Now, the pendulum is going to get its maximum velocity at the equilibrium position because from the time we release it till it reaches the equilibrium position, the tension component here is going to be accelerating the pendulum in this direction, okay, toward the equilibrium point. If we pass the equilibrium point, the tension is going to start pulling back this way and the acceleration is going to become opposite to the velocity and the pendulum is going to start slowing down. Now what we do here is we place a washer on top of one of our hanging masses. Um, and when we hit this barrier, that washer is going to keep moving, losing just a little bit of its velocity uh, because there's a little energy loss to friction as it slides off the top of the washer. But that's not a very significant amount. I think we maybe have trouble even observing that small amount of energy in the lab. Okay? So, when we do this, we're going to be able to determine the delta x just by measuring it. How far does the washer travel before hitting the floor? If we know how far it is to the floor, then we're going to be able to use uh, what we know about the range of a, pen, uh, of a projectile uh, to determine what the initial velocity was. Uh, it's going to turn out that our delta x here ought to be our maximum velocity times the delta t that we get when we fall from this height. So we have a simple kinematics equation to get our delta t, 
from a height of 1.16 meters, which is where we dropped this thing from, we find that delta T should be 0.49 seconds. The delta X that we actually observed for this system was about 37 centimeters. If we divide that by 0.49 seconds, uh, the 37 centimeter delta X by the 0.49 second delta T, we obtain a Vmax of about 75 or 76 centimeters per second. Now we can compare that with our prediction here. Remember that our prediction was 78 centimeters per second. You see it right here. So we got a pretty good validation of what our maximum velocity ought to be.